So my first tip is to always make sure that your camera is at eye level with the dog. So in dog photography, you really want to get very low on the ground. In this case, I was photographing a very small dog, which means my camera is literally on the ground. If this is the ground, you just lay it like this and you will lay and it gives a much better effect if you take it at eye level than if you take it from above. Here, I'll show you two examples so you can see what it's like uh, when you take it from the eye level compared to from above. Tip number two is to use a very low aperture. So I'm using a f1.8 lens and uh, sometimes I'll stop that down to f2.8 just to get all of the dog in focus, but I really recommend using a lens of 2.8 or faster to get bokeh, you know, those delicious bokeh balls in the background and to really enhance your subject separation. Also, if you want to have a fast shutter speed, which you do when you photograph moving targets uh, and there is not much light, you need a low aperture so that you don't get too much noise when you bump up your ISO. Tip number three is to use a high shutter speed when photographing dogs, especially when they're moving. And so what do I mean by a high shutter speed? Um, when dogs are running towards me, uh, I'll usually aim for a shutter speed of 1250. So that is a good starting point. And I feel like some people really misunderstand this and they think that you should use one over the focal length number, which in this case is a 135 millimeter. But if I use one, you know, 135 or 150 shutter speed, that would be way too slow and it would get blurry images. So try, aiming for 1,250 shutter speed when, use, when, um, when photographing moving dogs. I would say if the dog is standing still, you should aim somewhere around 400 to 640. It's pretty good shutter speed, but anything slower than that, it's, uh, it will more than likely give you a soft image. Tip number four is to use a long lens. And I don't mean like long, I mean like a long focal length. Usually you cannot be too close to the dog, especially when it's moving around. And uh, in order to have any kind of reach, you need, I would say, at least a hundred millimeter on a full frame. I really recommend using this lens, which is a Samyang 135 millimeter f1.8, which is great for dog photography. And it's actually just new. And in the future, I'll do a review on this lens, but it's basically equivalent to Sony's G Master 135 f1.8 as well. This one has slightly worse autofocus, but I would actually say the sharpness is even better than the Sony version and the chromatic aberrations are non-existent. So getting a long focal length will give you very nice compression, very nice subject separation, which means that when you're eye level with the dog, if this is the dog and you're photographing here, uh, then this, the, because of the long focal length and hopefully low aperture, the background will be totally obliterated and you will only get the dog sharp. The rest of the image will just fade away and give you a very nice look. When you use a wider angle to photograph dogs, you can't really get the subject separation you need. And also it's hard to fill out the frame with the dog. So I really recommend using, you know, maybe 85 millimeter up the way, all the way up to a 85 to 200. It's kind of a good range. And if you can get a prime lens, that's even better probably, but also a 70 to 200 2.8 will be a good option. So a longer focal length for photographing dogs is a good idea. So tip number five is backlighting. Uh, what I mean by that is make sure when you photograph your dog at, especially if you're photographing at golden hour, that the light is coming from somewhere around the back. Uh, it doesn't have to be exactly at the back. It can be, at around 45 degrees uh, from the back. Um, but you want to do that in order to get the illuminated ears and hair of the dog. If you have light coming directly into the face of the dog, it doesn't look flattering. It looks too sharp most of the time. So if you do have direct light, definitely go for backlit photos. And tip number six is eye contact. And what I mean by that is the dog should be looking at the lens most of the time. Of course, you can make artistic decisions where the dog is looking in a certain direction and you try to photograph that. 
but if the dog is generally trying to look at you at the camera having the dog look into the lens creates a contact point with the viewer and it makes you more connected to the animal uh, the way you can achieve this is for example in this case when i was photographing the dog Vigo, i was laying down i had Mikkel put him in a certain position and wait the Mikkel went behind me and went directly behind me holding a treat and then he called for the dog then the dog will come running towards the camera and of course it will be looking in a general direction of the lens because that's where the treat is so that's a, a nice way to get the eye contact tip number seven is animal eye autofocus and uh, what i mean by that is your camera will usually have different autofocus settings so right now mine is set to uh, eye autofocus and the camera i'm filming on is eye autofocus but there's also animal eye autofocus and if your camera supports that you should definitely be using it nailing the focus on the eye is very important and when you when you shoot in burst mode if the dog is running towards you um, most of your shots will not be in focus especially if, you, if you're using like a off-brand lens like i'm using a samyang the hit rate is not incredibly good and so you really want to try to land as many shots as you can to have something workable turning on the animal eye autofocus is of course very important and make sure that when you're photographing you should of course be in burst mode if the dog is coming towards you and just make sure that you have at least one good photo out of maybe 20. so tip number eight is noise reduction in post and so when you're out photographing dogs in the nature in the forest sometimes they can be in a low light situation and as i mentioned before when dogs are running you want to have a shutter speed of around 1200 meaning that you probably have to turn your iso up sometimes maybe up to 3200 or something around that and um, that will of course introduce noise and so i recommend using noise reduction software i personally just use uh you know Lightroom. Lightroom has a noise reduction slider and I think it works pretty well. There, there are other software out there which I don't use but yeah. yeah but these give, generally give you good results and they, they soften the image a bit. They remove a little bit of detail. So what you might want to do is use it at the places that are not the face of the dog and because those areas that are not the face you want to have it kind of soft anyway because you want the focus to be on the eye of the dog so it doesn't make it doesn't detract from your photo that it's not super sharp when it's at the edge and not the face of the dog tip number nine is editing and editing makes a huge difference i'm going to show you on the screen now the before and after or maybe before and after let's see but of two images that I one is the raw version and one is the edited version and changing colors improving texture clarity those things really make a huge difference and especially relating to the exposure so if you if you underexpose it a bit you have to bump it up in post you usually want to expose the face a bit brighter than the rest of the body to draw attention to the face you sometimes want to change the colors for example one quick editing tip that i can give you is usually i like to reduce the intensity of the greens i like to tone down green because green is very distracting it's very prominent in the photo and it draws attention away from the dog so i will make more videos on editing but for now i will just say try to get the exposure of the face to be a bit brighter than the rest and try to tone down greens and other distracting bright elements of the photo that are not directly the dog. And lastly, point number 10 is having at least two points of contact. Now, this is something I learned myself from another photographer and it just means that when you have a subject with his or her dog, having at least two points of contact creates more interaction with the viewer and the scene so for example it could be the person holding the hand of the dog while looking at the dog or it could be looking at the dog and also you know petting the dog that would be two but just looking at the dog without doing anything or just holding the hand but looking away it's 
not as personal, so counting at least two contact points will give you great photos when there is a human and a pet in the photo.